all around us. All around us, we know that we are in the midst, or at least towards the end, of the season of giving. That quest to find the perfect gift to give to someone you care for or the someone perhaps you feel obligated to get a gift for, but the quest to find the perfect gift indeed. And by this point, I hope all the gifts have uh, been purchased or maybe you plan on getting gift cards or cash, but um, the stores, I think, are mostly closed by this point, and I give thanks for that too. Some of you, perhaps, have your presents neatly wrapped under the tree. Some, perhaps, may be waiting for Santa Claus to to come in the very early morning hours, perhaps, and and bring the rest of the presents, and I hope there's something great. I know of at least a few children who are excited that this is the season of giving. Perhaps not so much that they will be giving, but that they will be on the receiving end of the giving. Um, And I know at least some in my household that feel the same way as well. Not so much that, that that's all that it's about, but that is so much of what the magic is for our children. It's a hard job, but somebody's got to open the gifts. It's a, also the season of giving in a different way. This is the time of year, the, the last two months of the year, when charitable giving is, is at the highest rates of out, out the whole year. And, and this perhaps make, pe- makes people who are in charge of nonprofit fundraising a little uh, challenged at the end of the year because you see budget shortfalls and you see challenges that you have to make up by the end of the year. Uh, the good news is, is that people are often encouraged uh, to give at the end of the year. Some need that last minute tax deduction and others are promoted by a sense of well-being and wanting to to participate in the holiday cheer by giving. And um, some have a great combination of both. They want to give from a heart, but also want the tax deduction too. And that is, that is um, we'll take it anyway, right, Sandy? I mean, it doesn't matter how it happens. Um, <laughs> and it, it is a time when uh, we see an uptick in charitable giving. Giving and, and giving gifts, it's, it's part of what this season is known for. And there is, um, it is just what we do. You see it in the advertisement. You see it, around, you see it in, the, in the, the longing of so many people this time of year. All through the, the previous few weeks, you may have been like me and trying to find that perfect gift. And, and I want you to know that I found the, the perfect gift for my wife, Hope. Um, and, and I ordered it from a website that I, I'm not sure was a legitimate website. Um, and, and it was shipping for over a month. Thankfully, it, it actually did arrive. So maybe the website was legitimate, but do not make these orders just like this is a disclaimer, be careful when you order from. And I, anyways, um, I, the gift arrived yesterday and, and it was, I ordered it over a month ago. So it's not like I was the last, but that's just like, like this, is, this is what we do this time of year. And this evening, this evening, that we come to a, a time and a place where, where shopping is complete and the only thing left to, un, to do is to unwrap the presents and receive the gift. The anticipation and the excitement, I know for many it continues. And later tonight or tomorrow morning when the unwrapping begins, the gifts will be met with different reactions. And some of the reactions will be great excitement because sometimes you find that perfect gift and that that perfect gift is met with the perfect reaction. I know as a parent, I want to see that reaction, right, from my child that that I have have done the thing that that brings them joy. That's kind of an odd thing because you really can't make people feel a certain way. And uh, but um, that's, that's what we do to ourselves. Or, or maybe when somebody receives the gift that you thought was perfect, that, that they might not really care for it. And, and perhaps you've done that as well. And, and somebody says, oh, thank you. Um, can I have the receipt, right? Uh, 
Or perhaps you, 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 you buy gifts and, and you come to find out that, that those that are receiving them uh, love the box and the wrapping paper more than they do the gifts. I have a one-year-old, and I'm really certain that when George opens his Christmas presents, he will much more enjoy the boxes and the wrapping paper than he will the toys. You can't control what the receiver does. You can't control what the opening of the gifts inspires in the hearts and the minds of the receiver. You know, when I think about the perfect gift, I cannot help but think about the perfect gift that was given at Christmas. The perfect gift that was given especially at that first Christmas You see, on the first Christmas, God sent Jesus, born of Mary, to be the perfect gift for all of humanity. And Jesus was sent to be the perfect gift to heal and to bring hope and to connect people together, all those who were lost and all those who were alone. And if you are a Christian or a person of faith, this is something that you likely know well. Christmas is more than than Coca-Cola polar bears, than Santa Claus, than gift wrapping. Christmas is, is about the most perfect gift that was ever given. The gift of God through Jesus Christ sent to all of humanity. And while it can be hard to know, it can be hard to know how the gifts you give will be received and how what people will think and if they will fit, this is not the case with the first Christmas. Because when God gave the gift of Jesus, when God gave the gift of Jesus, those who were around around him had one response. There was only one response. If you read the, 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 the Bible and you hear about those who gathered around and actually saw Jesus, the ones that we've sung about this evening, they had one response. Your attempts at finding the perfect gift, they may fail because the shipping didn't come through, because people had a different reaction. But God's perfect gift inspires worship. God's perfect gift inspires worship. And so what I want to do right now is I want to spend just a moment with you in the story that God gives us in the Bible and so I'm going to open the Bible to the book of Luke. And, and, and the book of Luke is, is written by, uh, tradition tells us, is written by this guy named Luke who was a follower of Jesus who spent most of his, uh, or a, a, some of his life following after Jesus and then dedicated himself to it. And, and then we have it in our Bible. It's, it's one of the first books of the, of the New Testament that tells about the life and the ministry of Jesus. And there's nobody, I think, that tells about the birth of Jesus better than Luke. And so the way Luke tells the story is that he tells us that there's, this, there's Mary. And Mary and her husband, Joseph, they're on a trip to this town called Bethlehem. And it just so happens that that Mary is pregnant, like way pregnant, like way so pregnant she should not be like going on an airplane pregnant. This is like, do not ride the roller coaster pregnant. But yet the Roman government doesn't really care about the warnings at Dollywood. The government says, you need to go to this town because you have to register to pay some taxes. And um, for everybody that, that knows that you have to, pay taxes. They're like, yeah, I understand. And, and so that's what, that's what Mary and Joseph are doing. They're going to Bethlehem so they can register to, to, pay, for, to pay these taxes. And, and she is quite pregnant. And while they are on this journey, Mary goes into labor. And it became clear that as she is uh, going into labor, that they needed to find a place for her to deliver this child, for her to receive this child. And the thing is, they, had, they probably knew where they were going. They probably had a house and, and like an Airbnb type arrangement situated, know where they were going to go. But when they got there, things weren't probably the way they wanted. And, and, and there was no room in the house. And so they said, well, you know, we've got a really nice garage, and, and you can stay in our garage, and, and in this garage, we, we kind of keep some animals there, and, and you can hang out, and you can stay with the animals. And so Mary and Joseph go to the stable. They go to the garage, and Mary labors. She gives birth to her son, and they're trying to figure out where to put him and what to do with him in this garage. And, 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 and so she wraps him in the clothes that she has, swaddles him, and lays him in a manger, which is 
become a fancy word for a feeding trough where Jesus lays a manger turned into a makeshift baby crib. Now, as remarkable and as human as this birth story is, the story of God's perfect gift in Jesus, it doesn't end here. Others are about to receive the good news of God's gift in Jesus. Here's what Luke has to say in Luke chapter 8. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood. So it's not that it happened just to Mary and Joseph in this stable, in this first century garage. It's that there were other people involved. And so there were shaber, sh- shavers, that's a, you're welcome. There were shavers. So what did you do tonight? Well, I went to church at this weird church and the preacher started talking about shavers. So um, anyways, there were shepherds. And these shepherds were in the neighborhood close to where Mary and Joseph were and where Jesus had just been born. And, and we read that they had set night watches over their sheep and, and suddenly God's angels stood among them and God's glory blazed around them and they were terrified. And the angel said, don't be afraid. I've come here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everyone worldwide. A Savior has just been born in David's town. A Messiah, uh, a Savior who is Master. And this is what you're looking for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and laying in a manger. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights and peace to all men and women on the earth who please him. You see, God's perfect gift inspires worship. And the angels were the first to learn about the gift of Jesus. And the angels who are messengers at heart, they just have to tell somebody. And so they find these shepherds and they worship. They tell the shepherds and they sing about it. And then, and then they, 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 they say, you know, glory to God in the highest glory. God's perfect gift inspires worship. And then what happens in verse 15 is that the angel choir withdrew to heaven and the shepherds talked it over and said, let's go to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. And so they left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. And they told everyone that they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. So the shepherds then go to check out what the angels have told them and they run and they see and they believe that it's true. And in this believing, they worship. And they don't sing here because they get the clue that Mary has just delivered this child and she's not much in the mood perhaps for their singing. And, and, and so they just tell her about it and, 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 and the singing will come later, but they worship as they testify what has been revealed to them. They worship by sharing and witnessing to Mary and to those, everything God had revealed because God's perfect gift inspires worship. And then we learn in verse 19 that, that Mary kept these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. And the shepherds returned and let loose. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. And it turned out exactly the way they were told. Mary worships too. She worships quietly and then the shepherds go. And they let it loose. They let loose glorifying and praising God for everything because God's perfect gift inspires worship. This Christmas, can you see it? This Christmas, can you see God's perfect gift? This Christmas, can you worship God's perfect gift? Will you worship God's gift in Jesus? I want to now move to a time to invite you to worship perhaps just a little bit more deeply. We're going to share in communion around the cradle of Jesus, and then we're going to light candles together and, and, and stand and, and sing, keep vigil as we sing Silent Night, an act of worship, beautiful and simple. And so I invite you now to join me in prayer. Join me in prayer to, to God who who invites you to a special time of worship, a time of eating and singing, of sharing, a time of worship, worshiping the one born in a manger, a time of worshiping Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. It's Christmas Eve again, God. We're barely ready for it. 
the gifts we've bought and wrapped, the parties we attended, the trees trimmed and homes decorated. We're in a whirlwind of activity in the midst of the busyness. We sometimes miss what it's all about. Your perfect gift, Jesus. Help us to hear anew. Your promises of hope and salvation and love as we prepare to receive communion around the cradle and light the candles of hope. Forgive us for forgetting the magic of this night, for focusing on ourselves and what we need to do instead of on the miracle of Jesus' birth. Rock us out of our complacency. Let us hear angel voices worshiping. She sees shepherds hurrying to the stable, worship and feel a baby's soft breath on our cheeks and ponder in our hearts what this all means for the world. And for us. Amen. Now, friends, this is a magical night. It doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. This is a magical night. And on this night, we share in a meal of communion. You see, Jesus was born a baby, laid in a manger, wrapped in swaddling cloths. But Jesus didn't stay a baby. In fact, Jesus grew, and as he grew, he became a a man who went out in ministry to all the world, speaking of a new way of living, a way of living of hope and connection and belonging, a way of living that, that is a different way of living than the people all around him knew, a way of living that brought sight to the blind, that released those who were held in captivity to sin and death. And Jesus... Just as he was born in a common place, he would also die in a common place. On a cross made for a criminal. But before Jesus died, before he left, he had a meal with his closest friends. And in this meal, Jesus Jesus did something special. That the followers of Jesus have participated in ever since. What Jesus did is he took a loaf of bread and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. He broke the bread and blessed it. And then Jesus took a cup and and gave thanks to God and blessed it and, and said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. And so the followers of Jesus have been invited to participate in this magical and mysterious meal of Holy Communion to find sustenance and strength for the journey. So right now I want to invite you to join me in prayer. Oh Holy Spirit, I ask that you pour out your presence on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. Make us one with you and one with each other until you come in final victory and we feast together the feast fit for the saints of all. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite those who are serving to come forward at this time and to please serve each other. This is the body of Christ, which is given for you. This is the cup of salvation poured out for you. In just a few moments... You'll be invited when our servers are ready to come forward and to receive the bread and the cup. If you, if you desire to grow closer to Jesus, you are welcome to receive. All he asks is that you come forward and open your hands, perhaps placing them in the sign of a cross. And then bread will be placed in your hands. And then you take and eat that bread. Following which you can take a cup of, of juice. Drink this cup, receiving the presence of Christ. On the outside, there are also candles. So after you receive communion, please pick up a candle to take back to your seat. There are trash receptacles to place your remains there as well.
please come. just a moment we're going to move to lighting candles if anyone needs a candle please raise your time at this at, please raise your hand at this moment and a candle will be brought to you dear ones through the power of Jesus you have been filled with the presence of God Give thanks for the joy that God has brought. 
I give thanks for this Christmas Eve where we are able to share together. And in just a moment, we will light the lights. As we do this, just as an instruction point, um, myself and uh, Jackson will be walking down the center aisle lighting the inside candle. If your candle is not lit, please turn it to receive the light from the candle that is lit. This helps to uh, keep wax from burning yourself. Um, and then invite you to then pass the light down to the neighbor um, that's next to you that does not have a lit candle yet. Inside your worship program, we will, there, we will be singing Silent Night, and so the words are printed there for your convenience. I invite you to pray with me. O oh, holy and blessed God, Yours is the presence, and yours is the power. And this evening, we have one more act of worship. To light candles and sing the light of the angels. To join the light that comes in the darkness. To worship that perfect gift who came in the manger. Who died on the cross, who rose again, and in whose presence we have just partaken through the bread and the cup. As we make this sign act, and as we sing these words, may your spirit be blessed. Amen.
May the worship of the angels, the worship of Mary, the worship of the shepherds be filled in your heart as the light shines, as you celebrate Christmas. Merry Christmas, dear ones. Merry Christmas. I invite you now to extinguish your light as we prepare to depart. With the grace of God, go from this place, carrying the light and the celebration in every place and with everyone with whom you encounter and with whom you celebrate. Go with the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit this day and evermore. And have a very, very Merry Christmas. Amen. Go in peace.